One way to do this question, which would actually be really awful, is to multiply everything out and then we'd have a polynomial and we'd be able to do it then. Um, if you think about it, let's just for fun, uh, you know, if this would be eight degree polynomial here, four times two, this would be a fifth degree polynomial. So in brackets, we have an eight degree polynomial raised to the power of six. So this would be a, a degree 48 polynomial. And then we could do the derivative term by term and we wouldn't have to use a chain rule. But of course, that is not the way to approach this. We want to use a chain rule. It'll make things so, so much easier. So what do we have going on here? We really have, at the outermost level, we have a power of six, right? Something to the power of six. To do the derivative of that, it's no problem. The six comes to the front. All the stuff that I'm ignoring in the brackets stays still. The power decreases by one to a five. And then afterwards, I multiply by the derivative of everything that I'm ignoring. And what am I ignoring here? Well, the sum of these two terms here, 5x squared plus 1 to the power of 4 plus 1 minus 3x to the power of 5. And the same quantity goes in brackets over here. 5x squared plus 1 to the 4 plus 1 minus 3x to the 5th. All right, so now this part is done, so unfortunately we just got to quickly recopy it. And let's do the derivative of this part. So for when we do the derivative here, this is a sum. So we're going to do each derivative um, separately with a plus. I actually would like to, uh, I want to make a little, I want to do something here and, and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so let's, let's see here. Uh, the 4 is going to come to the front. And then we have 5x squared plus 1. The 4 goes down to a 3, and then we multiply by the derivative of this, which is 10x, right? Okay. Plus, and now we do do the derivative of this, 5 times 1 minus 3x to the power of 4, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, and we get negative 3. So what do you guys think about that? Is this correct? There's actually a mistake here, and it's... Uh, kind of a common mistake. You have to be a little bit careful about this. You see, we have a set of brackets here. Maybe it would help if I put those uh, in square brackets. And that might make it a little bit more clear of where this mistake is. You see, I have a derivative of a sum here. And those square brackets, they should really extend all the way to the very end. The mistake is actually right here with this bracket. We don't want to close off the bracket yet. We want to go all the way to the end and then close it off, right? That way, this sum, this plus this, is multiplied by our original factor out front, right? So just keep that in mind. But uh, other than that, everything's looking fine. We could clean this up a little bit. I don't know if it's even worthwhile. We could, 4 times 10 is 40x, right? And this would be a minus 15. And... I don't think we can factor, I guess we could factor out a five. Why don't we do that just for practice? So I'm gonna factor out a five from here. There's a five located right there and there's a five located right there. I'm gonna pull that to the front. Five times six will give me 30. And this stuff here though stays. Factoring is not even really necessary here because it's uh, things are not factored over here anyways, and this question is not intended for that. But anyways, uh, we factored out a 5 here, so there's a 2 left here, right? 2 times 4 is 8, 8x. And then we have a 5x squared plus 1 cubed. And minus 3, 1 minus 3x to the 4. And that's as far as I want to take this. So the main thing about here, I just wanted you to be careful. When you have a, a sum and you're doing chain rule, don't close your bracket too soon, right? Make sure that the brackets extend all the way across and your two terms are located within those two brackets.